brand new power supply. What do you do with one of those? I know, I'll do an unboxing. No. What I'm actually going to do is demonstrate load testing in a slightly unconventional way. Whenever you get a new bit of kit, it's wise to test it before it's put into service. That way you can be sure it'll perform. In the case of a power supply, that usually means running it at full tilt for 24 hours, and if nothing bubbles over, it's all good. Of course, in another sense, you're always kind of hoping it goes bang. But regardless of whether it works or not, that's extremely boring. You've got to find a dummy load with the right inductive and resistive characteristics, it wastes energy that's just converted to heat, and you've got to sit around for ages while, in most cases, it does bugger all. So instead, I'm going to stick a bunch of components on the output and see which can take the most abuse. Early signs suggest that might just be the power supply. Oh well, let's try a few more. The power supply in question is a Manson SSP-7080, rated at 80 watts and capable of 5 amps and 36 volts. Just not in conjunction, obviously, because then I would have lied about it being 80 watts. So let's see what that does to a quarter watt metal film resistor. I'm sure you can tell I'm not going to be treating these things kindly. Let's try another. Well, a carbon film one doesn't fare much better. Ramping up the power a bit. Renowned as being extremely tolerant of overloads, it's the tantalum capacitor. Okay, that didn't last long. For this one I'll ramp up the current slowly. That's one amp. Two. Three. Four. And it's gone. Rectifier diode, rated for 1 amp, so I'm going to be using 5 of those. Not so energetic, but clearly not the happiest of diodes. How about a smaller one? Oh. Electrolytic cap, now we're getting somewhere. Well, that's just squirting electrolytes at my microphone. Brilliant. Sorry for those of you wearing headphones whose ears are now full of smoke. It's not my fault. Blame the cap. Next. This is a small Mylar speaker. Integrated circuit. I've literally blown the arse out of it. And that one's blown its top. Surface mount electrolytic. Although in this instance it's not surface mounted, but I don't think that'll be a problem. It wasn't. Another electrolytic? This one doesn't have any venting. Ah, oh, I should have done that one last. Look at the mess it's made. Yellow LED. Huh. Alright, so the yellow LED was a failure. Turns out we need more power. Good thing I've got two of them. Green LED. Maybe too much power. If I'm allowed to say that. Bicolor LED. Bye. Get it? Because it's a bi colour. Yeah, never mind. And this is a small low current flavour LED. Blue. Another blue. That looks deceptively like infrared. 
That's caught me out a few times, so I'll be glad to obliterate it. 10k resistor. Maybe with a slightly modified power source. An inductor. That's just ruined my audio. And a slightly smaller inductor. There, that one was much better behaved. Potentiometer. Precision 100 ohm resistor. Not so precise now, are you? And a regular resistor. Two resistors. By my arithmetic, that should be... Twice as good. Yeah, I'll give it that. And this... Should have hit record further in advance. This fluorescent tube has a small filament at each end, hence the two pins, that exhibits an effect called thermionic emission to get the flow of electrons going. You can power it up on a couple of volts. You can see it glowing quite nicely there. And of course it's very easy to overload. Here's the other end. Alright, so this isn't strictly the same power supply, uh, but who cares, I'm going to overload some fluorescent tubes. You might recognise this CFL from a previous video. Yep, it's still with us. Transformers smoking, and I don't think it was the lamp that went then. Found the problem. I'd say that means this was a success. Now with a fresh fuse. So what we've learnt here is that none of these manufacturers took the care to incorporate tolerance for a 200% overload. Pretty shoddy if you ask me. And finally, this is a cool white tube. See? How cool is that? Uh, it was while it lasted.